kind of person you'll come to when you get atrial fibrillation or asthma or heart disease or unfortunately cancer, although I'll refer you to an oncologist from all the toxic air pollutants and other pollution from this incinerator. I met these wonderful women from Wagner's Point in the surrounding area. And by this point, all they could do was ask the city to buy them out because they had one polluting industry after another. And they knew that there was a lot of cancer in their small neighborhood and in Fairfield. And eventually the city brought them out. We don't want that to happen to this neighborhood. And it's unconscionable for any more dirty industry to be permitted by the agency. <laughs> we depend on our state agencies to protect us and, and you know that's that's what we need you to do. The people in this community deserve clean, healthy jobs. You know, dioxin. You get dioxin, which comes out of the stack from incinerators. When you get it in your fat, men have no way to get rid of it. Guess how women get rid of it? They have babies. We can't let this happen. There is no way this should be permitted. We can't make incineration clean enough. Thank you. We have, I believe, two incinerators. One's Wheeler Brader, one's a large medical waste, in addition to all the small ones. Uh, Wheeler Brader is currently quoting 2250 tons, 2250 tons a day capacity, which comes out to about 800,000 tons a year. All right, this proposed incinerator is uh, supposed to have a capacity of 4,000 tons a day, which comes out to 1.4 million tons a year, twice what Wheel Abrader is going to do. Um, and that breaks down to about 3 billion, 3 billion pounds uh, a year. 3 billion pounds of trash they're talking about burning in our atmosphere every year that's going to land in our neighborhoods. From a medical standpoint, I'm also a physician. There are some CDC statistics regarding the asthma that everyone's talking about. $50 billion were spent in 2007 on asthma. One in 12 adults have been diagnosed with asthma. That's an increase from one in 14 uh, a few years prior. One in five African-American kids have been diagnosed with asthma. One in five. That's a 50% increase from 2001 to 2009. Two in five, or 40%, are uninsured and cannot afford their medications, which means they end up in the emergency department. When's the last time I saw an asthma case? Yesterday, who came in a complete respiratory failure and I had to put him on a vent. You can chalk that up to at least $50,000 to $100,000 hospital stay. So some considerations for the Maryland government. Consider that your Medicaid costs are gonna go up. Consider that your disability uh, costs are gonna go up because people are gonna claim additional disability because they have respiratory illness and cannot hold a job. Consider that your property taxes are going to go down, your revenue from property taxes, because people like me are not going to want to live in an ashtray. And consider the opportunity cost of those who would consider moving to Baltimore and will not do so with three incinerators running full time. Thank you. You have uh, air to land uh, to water dispersion plume. In other words, it, it spreads out over everywhere like you're talking about and deposits all these materials. We live in the middle of a CDC uh, disease cluster. It's in a five mile radius, covers northern Anne Arundel County, southeast Baltimore County, half of Baltimore City. We are also number one in the state of Maryland, 15th in the nation right now. We used to be 26, now we're 15th. They are going to be bringing this waste. If you follow a truck down uh, 95 to King George, you know you have a trackable waste stream wherever these uh, vehicles come from to bring this material. The full EIS should have comprehensive triad approach under NOAA and Department of the Interior for coastal zones, which we are in. I don't see that entered here in this process. Something uh, that, that is clean, this is not it. And if they haven't built any in 15 years or longer, you know, it should tell us something. Do we really want this here? No. Thank you very much. I also grew up here in Curtis Bay. I used to see daily my mother go out on the porch and sweep this debris off the porch and steps every day. It was a yellow dust.
So I know about chemicals and, and debris that, that, that came through the air because of the factors and all here. Then they all decided, well, if it rotted, decayed, or rusted, let's put it in Curtis Bay. Very good. Then we got it, our own dump. And it just continued for Curtis Bay. Well, now I live in Anne Arundel County. Of course, we're, we're within that 10 mile radius, as somebody said earlier, that uh, you know, these pollutants will be flying through the air and, and, and greeting us. We have a high rate of cancer in, in North Anne Arundel County. At one time, we were number one per capita in Northern Anne Arundel County, which includes Curtis Bay, all right? Brooklyn, Brooklyn Park area, you are also suffering from some of these pollutants. So needless to say, we are totally against this incinerator. And when we read articles and saying it's gonna be putting into the air this fine soot, lead, mercury, sulfuric acid mist, is this the kind of stuff we want in our air? The cancer rate, like I said, in our area is, is amazing. And it's not one particular cancer. It's not lung cancer. It's not uh, throat cancer or anything like that. It's multiples. You can ask the doctor who was here earlier. It's just all kind of different cancers. So something is wrong. So we're gonna add this to our area. The good thing we got the good hospitals we have because maybe they can take care of us. Again, I totally am against, in my community, I'm the vice president of the community of Sun Valley, just down here in Northern Anne Arundel County. And we are totally against it. All the junk, they dump it in the southern side. All the rich folks live in the decent air up in the north. So being a resident, I see the trucks passing through, noise, pollution. So the noise, we got tolerated that. You know, fine, we close our windows, we stay at home. Pollution, we can't. So we don't open our windows. I personally cannot open my windows. I'm in a jail cell, so I have to breathe inside. I have asthma, I never had asthma. I take every medication the doctor here will know. Thoradil, Alcutrol, inhalers in my pocket, nebulizer at home, Singular, Renetidine. There's nothing left except waiting for a carcinogen to get into my body. Charm City. To me, I'm getting ready to just move to a different location. We're paying for what we do, like everybody else. So what's the difference between the person that lives, in, lives in, in Rockville or Bethesda and me here in Curtis Bay? I don't think that it is a legitimate thing from the politicians to let this go one step forward. Because come in the elections, we're going to take one step forward and we're going to take them out of these offices because our kids deserve a better life. If I die tomorrow, that's fine. But my kid doesn't deserve to be imposed on this environment that's poisonous and to be imposed on him. And he doesn't have any clue what's going on around him except he wants to play out. And I have to deprive him from being outside due to the fact that I know the scientific evidence that's existing outside and he doesn't and it's too hard to explain. So I just keep him indoors, comfy. And no matter how tight these windows are, the air is going to get in. You cannot just keep breathing in the box, sealed box. You have to open the door so it's going to get in. So this is a certificate of public uh, convenience <coughs> and necessity. Whose convenience? The Mahoney Standard answers, got the PF public service condition to waive their usual rules and expedite this permit. <clears throat> For convenience, the Mahoney's live in the Virgin Islands. Will they ever suffer the terror of seeing their kid go to the emergency room with an asthma attack? Will they ever suffer the terror of having their child develop a rare cancer? Probably not, they live in the Virgin Islands. Who's me? What me? Two years into the process, they can't get the waste and they can't sell the energy. But it gets even better. One of the two contracts they have for buying the energy is with the Baltimore Public Schools. So we'll pull and poison the kids and we'll get the schools to buy the energy, to provide the revenues to poison the kids. It's just plain wrong. Two million tons of greenhouse gases. Guess which communities in Maryland get screwed the worst by climate change? Baltimore is projected to have the highest mortality, the higher temperatures, 
higher nitrogen consumption and higher air pollution. You get a twofer here. It's a twofer. If jobs are the issues, it, this is not the way to do it. You can get more jobs in recycling and compost than you can do incineration and landfill. For every 10,000 tons that you, that you burn or bury, you get five, you get one job. For every 10,000 tons of tons you recycle, you get five to 10 jobs. That's at the process. And you get hundreds of jobs in the manufacturing and transport of the new product. If you want to locate industries here, let's look at Baltimore's waste stream and do the best we can with it. Don't make Curtis Bay uh, and these other communities the centers for massive importations of waste from other communities. It's just plain wrong. Not only is, is Energy Answers contracted with the school systems to buy their energy, they've contracted with the Maryland, Maryland Environmental Service, another public agency, to find trash for this incinerator. And they're trying to build a, a major transfer station in Hartford County so they can import massive amounts of waste to Baltimore City to burn here. That's a little shameful to have our public, our, our public agencies lining up to facilitate this, this facility. Second, we talked about kids a lot. Everybody knows the uh, uh, senior citizens, folks susceptible to the same pollutants in different ways. The study that came out in January of 2008, long-term study of lots of women over the age of 50. Women over the age of 50 exposed chronically to elevated levels of PM 2.5 fine particles showed elevated rates of heart attack and stroke and premature mortality from both. And that's just to begin with. So if you're older than 50, you don't escape either. Among the many toxins that uh, Energy Answers proposes to inject into the air and water and soil of this community is dioxin. Now I speak as a Vietnam veteran. I've got enough di dioxin in my blood, I don't need more. Uh, the Vietnam veterans in this community, and I just uh, don't need more. So I offer a modest proposal to the Public Service Commission. And that's simply that should the PSC approve this ill-considered proposal to allow energy answers to poison the air, water, and soil, and people of this community, that they should adopt the same standard for associating a disease uh, incurred in the residents of the community as the U.S. government does for veterans who served in Vietnam, i.e. any disease that the Department of Veterans Affairs presumptively service connects in Vietnam veterans energy answers should assume the same responsibility and pay the same compensation. Thank ...of our families to be at the table so that they'll begin to understand what's, um, what's, going, what's happening in their community. Come to Ben Franklin to um, engage the young people there so that they have a chance to have a conversation and also have a conversation with energy answers, conversation with our elected officials, conversations with agencies we have here tonight so that we continue to learn and we continue to, to be responsible and be accountable for each other. How many people are here from the city council? Was anybody here from the city council? Please note that in the meeting notes. Is anybody here from the mayor's office? It is, somebody said if they knew about the meeting, it is their job to know what the meetings are and for informing us. Is anybody here from the Sun Paper? Did you read about it in the Sun Paper? Yes. When? Today. Today, exactly. It is amazing to me what an, uneth what an ethically moral injustice action this is and I really believe that you all can make a difference, and I thank you. New schools can't be sited near, you know, industrial facilities, power plants, incinerators, things like that. And you have old existing schools here, and you have the, the power plant that's going to be sited, this waste energy incinerator that's the power plant, coming into the neighborhood, only a mile away, it's really awful because they don't really have a choice. The schools have already been there. 
and should those schools need to be renovated or relocated, perhaps they'll have to be out of the neighborhood. And if they go out of the neighborhood, where are the kids going to go? The kids are going to have to be bussed over to a new site or they're going to have to, um, like the other lady was saying, buy out the neighborhood because it's just too much industrial saturation. And um, it's a, a definitely a strong environmental justice issue from what I've learned about that. Because there's already a lot of facilities here. It's kind of like um, further north where they have all those jail and prison facilities. It's just industrial stuff instead. And that's, it's not right to just cluster everything in one spot like that. Yeah, there's no fair share after a while. And uh, I had considered living in Baltimore because I recently moved. I moved actually to the Lymphicum area. And, uh, and I thought against it because of some of the issues like this, pollution and other things like that. And as other people were saying as well, you, you want to attract people to come into the area, not push them out or maybe dissuade them from coming. Although you have the jobs, like it was also reiterated, the pollution is not going to um, outweigh those benefits. And so my house is less than a mile straight up Church <coughs> Street. I've lived in my house since 1986. And within two years, the value, my property value of my home dropped because of the social, economic, and environmental degradation of this area. But you know, within the next couple years, my husband and I are now starting to look to relocate. And one of the areas that we're considering is Baltimore City. But if, in fact, um, we are going to move into that area, I don't want to be breathing in the affluence from this incinerator. And so we would be starting to look at some of the other regions that we were considering, such as Annapolis and. These are our children and, and our brothers and our sisters that are being impacted by this. And you can't, you can't segregate the damage that's being done as to these people and, and not acknowledge that it doesn't affect us all as Baltimoreans, as Marylanders. This action is is so regrettable and it just breaks my heart. You just have enough air over a community or in a city, you can bring in um, trash from perhaps all over um, the Mid-Atlantic and make Baltimore City the Mid-Atlantic's trash can with 4,000 tons a day. We just don't think that this is, is a good way to grow our city. I'm from Glen Burnie now. I was able to move out. A lot of my friends have died with cancer. I have upper respiratory problems. How many of us kids ate the snow in here? We did, we all did. I'm just very upset and I hope that you do not put this incinerator here. And like I said, I'm speaking for these people. I live in Glen Burnie now and I grew up here and I'm coming back on their defense. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.